Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and this is a special edition of Book Community, the voting edition. So um, today I'm going to talk about two different things, voting for books and voting for president. Today is the election day in the States, well, when you're seeing this. So I will touch on that in a moment, but I wanted to start with Goodreads. So if you don't know, Goodreads is a website, an app where you can essentially track your reading, put books on there that you have read, that you are reading, or that you want to read. So they often have lists about books that are coming out and you can sort by genre, all that good stuff, make your own little digital bookshelf, so to speak. Um, and it is definitely the most popular one. There are some newer ones, which I definitely need to give a try because Goodreads is raggedy and needs so much work. But this is not the video that I'm going to go into that about. But the only real stir in the book community are these two things this week. So Goodreads every year does a Goodreads Choice Awards and they released their opening round a couple days ago. So, so today is November the 2nd that I'm filming this and on the website it says that the opening round voting closes in six days. So this is the preliminary round. They already have books that they've chosen but you can also write in a choice um, and it could be submitted. I don't know how many that have to be chosen like how many people have to write in the same title but you do have the option. So then they go into semi-final and they go to final round. Now the biggest things I've seen about this online are of course there aren't a lot of black or POC authors in the choices and then there's books that haven't even come out yet. So the opening round closes in six days and they have books like The Burning God and Rhythm of War that come out November 17th. So I don't think that's fair. In my opinion, they need to have like a cutoff date in the year and say after December 1st, no books would be included, like they would roll over into the next year and then have the voting out like at the end of December to give people time to actually read the books. Because just because it comes out this one week doesn't mean you're gonna read it in a few days and be able to vote. That's just my opinion. I would love to know how, how you feel about the Goodreads Choice Awards, but I could go on, but I'm not going to. So I'm just gonna go through really quick and look at some of the nominees so that you can see what's going on here. And they have American Dirt, a shame. Frederick Bachman's Anxious People just recently came out, but such a fun age, it's been out for a while. Um, My Dark Vanessa came out really early this year. So I just don't think that's fair. Like give them, give them more time. Because the book that came out in February, people have had all these months to read it versus a book that came out in October. People don't have that much time to read. Here in Thriller, I would love to see Alyssa Colvin in this category and not Ruth Ware, who probably would win. It's usually the same people who read the category. Or Riley Sager. Boo. I've read a few of these. Um, like Devil in the Dark Water just came out. Predominantly white section besides Alyssa Cole. Then what is this? Historical Fiction, which um oh the vanishing half by Britt bennett hopefully that wins i have not read that one yet and i do want to i didn't realize it was historical fiction which i do enjoy best fantasy oh man so see the burning god is there the girl of ice and stars i didn't know that was huh, a deadly education no i haven't heard of some of these empire of gold oh my god Pyrrha Nessie, that just recently came out. Rhythm of War, Not Out, Once in Future Witches just came out. The Invisible Life, Abby Rue just came out. Black Sun just came out. I bet you Sarah J. Mass will win. Oh, The House of the Cerulean Sea. I don't know who to vote for, but you get it, right? So that's my, those are the two issues. And I agree, there definitely should be more representation and diversity and they need to fix how the awards are structured so it gives a fair chance to all of the authors. But in that same vein, so a fellow booktuber, Princess at the Castle Library and Jasmine at Pardon My Imagination, channels I will link down below, and also Ashley, who I think is just a books grammar, not on booktube, have come together to create the Shaded Choice Awards, which I think is amazing. It has the first Shaded Choice Awards to celebrate new releases in 2020 from Black and POC authors. We want to hear from the book community on what your picks would be and not what Goodreads pick for you. Be the vote to uplift diverse books. So it's so awesome. I'm going to have this link down below and also the screen grab here. But the nominee, 
um, window is open from November 2nd to the 8th. So you can go on, just make sure the book was released in 2020 and that the author is black or a person of color. And then they have the categories. So you just select the category and then you can put in the author name and title to submit. And then the next round will go into voting. And I think that's so exciting. I think Princess is putting out a video today, which is Monday. Um, so if it's out by tomorrow, I'll have that link down below as well to give more details. But I just wanted to shout this out because she messaged me on Instagram and I was like, this is awesome. This website is awesome. I would love to know who made this. So make sure you check that out if you want to help uplift and support um, diverse authors. Go see what's already on there. There are some books that are already nominated and then go um, nominate some yourself if you don't see any of your picks up there. This is super cool. I don't know if they're going to do like a video or a live show or something for the win. I hope so. That'd be really fun. But I hope you guys check this out. It'll be in my description below. So that's all on Goodreads. I mean, I could go on and on about Goodreads because it's raggedy and it's owned by Amazon. But not today. I've got to eat and then take Bebe to the vet. So... Let's talk about the last thing. So on Bookstagram, there was a Bookstagrammer who posted something that caused a stir. So when I first joined the online book community, for some reason in my head, I thought most people read fantasy. <laughs> Okay, okay. And then with that, because um, with fantasy, you have to suspend your belief or your disbelief. And, you know, you'd be able to, uh, you have to be able to believe in magic and different creatures and all these things. So I thought that the majority of people who were like really serious readers were very open minded, you know, very liberal. That is not true, which is fair. Everyone has their own values and morals and beliefs. That's fine as long as they don't infringe on other people. But that is what we're here to talk about today when they infringe on other people. So someone on Bookstagram, she posted a stack of books and the title spelled out Trump. She said, my picture represents the name of the president I would like to see win. I've always liked Trump and I would like to see him win another four years. That being said, I know and have seen several of my friends have posted for Biden and Harris, and that's your right and freedom to do so. I just ask that no one condemned me for my vote as I wouldn't for yours. I'm here for books, but thought this would be fun to sell my president's name with these novels. Whoever you vote for, just get out and vote. It's your right and a tremendous exercise at that. I can agree with the last part. Get out and vote. It's your right. And today is the last day to vote in the uh, United States. But then she posted because, of course, that causes stir people talk about in their stories. That's how I found out because I didn't follow her. And she said, I've caused quite the stir on Bookstagram in the last 24 hours. So she wanted to do a meet the Bookstagrammer post. So her name is Mandy. She's a teacher and lives in Missouri. So she said, as you all know now, I'm a Trump supporter and not sorry about it. I'm pro-life, for lower taxes, for our military, pro-gun, for our veterans, for legal citizenship, all lives matter, and the right to religious freedom. That being said, everyone, I hope everyone can be respectful. Just because I don't support Biden doesn't mean I'm a racist or homophobic woman. I've got a ton of friends, all colors and those who are gay. And I support them all. I don't support hate speech or social bullying. I graduated college with a degree in political science and I'm an active voter. I want everyone to vote no matter who you vote for. She also had this in her story. What? I just don't understand she said pro-life no change that you're just to pro fetus because you just want the baby to be born and then you don't give a shit about it after that so just be straight up about it lower taxes the biden tax plan is for people who make over four hundred thousand dollars and i doubt mandy a teacher of littles makes over four hundred thousand dollars for our military i have never gotten why military people equate trump with military i mean I guess he gave them like a little bit of a raise and I, from my husband, like he's in the military, so I can tell you it's a little bit of a raise, um, but Trump didn't serve in the military, so I don't know why people like to uplift him like he's some military hero. Pro-gun. Look, I have nothing against the Second Amendment, but we need stricter gun laws. It's just, it's just a fact. Um, for our veterans, then why are so many veterans homeless? Hmm. for legal citizenship look i could go on a tirade about this but i hate that shit people i how can you not take a moment to pause and say why um 
if you have to come in through illegal means, and I don't even like using that, think why. They're not just like trying to jet in for a vacation. These people are fleeing their home, their culture, their family, their language, so that they can um, try to have a better life for themselves and their children. That is terrifying. And they go through such links, so such distances, so much danger to try to get to a better life that it's literally worth risking your life to travel across countries and across the border then stay where you are you can't take a moment to think about that and have empathy for that like how how do you not understand that and i hate just this whole narrative of the illegal aliens and not paying taxes well your president doesn't play pay taxes either so and you like these big corporations get off with paying the minimum so and I just don't understand that because a lot of migrant workers work so fucking hard. When all those fires were going on in like California and Oregon, I saw pictures and videos of migrant farm workers still out there picking fruits and vegetables. But you still went to um, you still went to Publix and got your Driscoll strawberries, Mandy. I bet you you did. And you know who picked those? An illegal immigrant. It wasn't Betsy down the street. Okay, so I just don't. Like, where is your your Christian values, your compassion for all people? You she said you, all lives matter, so why don't theirs? What you mean are white conservative lives matter. The right to our religious freedom. I'm all for that. Just keep it away from school and the government. If you want your child to have um, religion in school, send them to a private Christian school. And it does not have a part in our government. It's called separation of church and state. So, no, like religious freedom, freedom to practice it over there, not in the White House, not surrounding politics. Your religion should not influence laws. All these Republicans wanting to take down Roe v. Wade. No. Religion there, government here. Like, I don't I don't know why there's a confusion. And I love that she added in. I've got tons of friends in all colors and those who are gay and support them all. So I just want to add this in here that you don't have to know your acknowledge or know your racist to be racist. And she is. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that um, because of all those things she said, because if you can say all lives matter, she probably says blue lives matter. The issue you have is with the word black. So that means black lives don't matter to you because when you see them um, on your phone, on the TV being murdered, you don't care. You're just like, well, they should have been following the rules. So their life doesn't matter to you. When a baby is born because you were pro-life and then there's no one to take care of them, if their parent is struggling and they need assistance from the government, but you are against that, then you're not pro-life. That's just a simple fact. So you're not pro-life. You're not for all lives. You're for your group of people that you think are acceptable. When you're for religious freedom, what you mean is freedom to spout your Christianity everywhere and that that should dictate what other people do. That's what you mean. And so all of that bullshit is it's racist, it's xenophobic. They're, I mean, we can just keep on going. But tell me about your black friend and your gay friend that you got, Ma Mandy, Maggie, whatever your name is. Um, and it's not at her, I mean, it isn't her directly and anybody like her. And for some reason, I think the majority of my subscribers are pretty open-minded people. But for some reason, you stumbled across this and you got your Trump, what's that dude's name? Pence shirt on to go vote. Like, have a, have a, take a moment. Because when people are like, why'd you vote for Trump? People are like, well, he's not a politician. He's a businessman. Okay, one, we need a politician, literally, <laughs> as a president. I know they mean that as in like po politicians or slippery, slimy, lying guys are just as bad as a used car, car salesman. Well, he's not a good businessman either because his daddy gave him those small loans and he still failed multiple times. Um, he doesn't give back to America because he's not even doing his share and paying his taxes. And no, that is not smart. That is not business savvy. That's illegal. They come after people all the time for not paying their taxes. And it's usually black or brown people. And they usually end up in jail. Um, they say he's pro-military. I don't, I, don't, I don't really get that. He didn't serve himself. I don't know why people look up to him like that. Um, that he's a patriotic. Then what about all his dealings with like Ukraine and Russia? What about that? So I just, 
I think a lot of people have realized, you know, their internalized racism this year. And a lot of people still are being very ignorant to that. And they're like, just because I support Trump doesn't mean I'm racist. That's exactly what it means because there's literally nothing else for you to support in that man. He's disgusting. He doesn't, he definitely is no Christian. So many disgusting things about him and the people around him that the only way you support him is because you don't want your status quo to change and because and that is racism because you don't want someone else to come in and make it better for all people so you're racist i want you to sit with that if this is attacking you you need to sit with that and see why so this is the last day to vote in america i hope people have gone out and exercised their right because there are so many people who have been disenfranchised who cannot vote there are so many things wrong with America. Our system is a sham. It's not broken. It was meant to be this way. It's a sham and we need at least one step in the right direction to change it and that is voting for Biden. I, like I said before, I didn't want to vote for him. Okay, um, there's so much wrong with him too. There's so much wrong with the entire system but this is what we have to choose. So last time people just didn't want to vote, you see what happened. So please, if for some reason you weren't gonna vote and you're watching this early enough, I beg you to please go vote. But that's all I'm gonna say today. I'm sorry to be another bearer of bad news, but I saw on Twitter that Rachel Kane, her real name is Roxanne Conrad, but she wrote under the pen name Rachel Kane has passed away. She was suffering from an aggressive and rare form of cancer, soft tissue sarcoma, and she passed away um, November 1st of this year. So she wrote a lot of books. I think it says over 56 books. I haven't read any of them. I did have her Still House Lake books on my uh, want to read list which were uh, a thriller series but she's written so many books and so it's very sad that she has passed so I just send condolences and prayers to her family and friends because obviously this year has already been so much and then to lose your loved one so that's really upsetting but I just figured I would include that in the video. Please in my description check out the links to Princess and Jasmine channel and to their website for the Shaded Choice Awards um my social media is in the description for links to my instagram twitter goodreads nigel's instagram and in the comments obviously you can comment on anything i've said but also tell me something positive <laughs> it's gonna be a hard week for all of us are you planning on baking anything have you made a, a delicious new recipe did you get a, a pet are you fostering a cat like tell me something happy in the comments please please give this video a thumbs up please subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye